in the blind this morning, the uh, couple of days here before the opener of uh, Michigan's Youth Hunt. And kind of raises a topic that I always uh, go into this time of the year. This is obviously a new um, octagon blind that a local uh, gentleman here makes uh, here in Michigan. And uh, I feel pretty spoiled to have this thing on the uh, new, on the, on the home farm, this, the property that's for sale. It's obviously um, something that should have been set here in place 10 years ago. But when you're in the profession that I'm in, um, everyone else's stuff gets done first kind of thing. And we had other properties to hunt um, up until this point. So this was kind of over the last couple of years after I had went uh, full time doing the, um, you know, the habitat management stuff in my consulting um, services full time. I uh, decided that it was time to put this together the way it should be. So I, uh, we've put some, a lot of time and elbow, elbow grease, if you will, to get this to where it is now. And this blind is uh, just something that when I, I sit in here right now, it's just one of those spots that just kind of gives you the, give, gives you the willies. Um, and you all, everybody watching probably has that stand or that bull stand or that blind. Um, maybe it's your rifle blind that you look forward to going into the, uh, you know, um, the rifle season or the gun season, wherever you're turn, tuning in from. Today's topic, what we're going to talk about is the kind of the do's and the don'ts, um, the modifications on blinds. And this here is a perfect situation. We got these blinds in and it, it's a great blind. The, the craftsmanship on these things are unbelievable. I had a couple of these on a, a farm that I had over the east part of the state or east of here years ago. And um, I just fell in love with them. So um, they are big and heavy duty and bulky and they're not as lightweight and probably as long long everlasting as maybe your fiberglass blinds you know that are out there on the market but uh, they're about a quarter of the price so um, to me I don't ever like to sacrifice quality because of price but I, I at some point um, you know you got to be realistic with your budget if you will so these these blinds here this is obviously an octagon you can see and from where you guys are at you're kind of on an angle but this window in the front is the that's what i like about these these blinds is that i you know kind of fell in love with them is because you enter from the door you enter the blind from the, the door is right on the the one uh you know the panel i guess you could say of the octagon so you walk in the door in the in the bow window is directly out the vertical window is directly out in front of you and then in this case here, you have the two side windows that act as our gun gun windows. You could still shoot a bow out of them by all means. Um, they're these ones here, and I can get you the guys' information to these if you if anybody's interested. Um, they're they're bigger windows. Um, some of them are you know they're they're the the gun window in the front, and the octagons out the side. And then what it is is your blinds are you know tilted. They work. I mean they're smaller windows. Keeps the blind a little bit darker maybe but uh you know we're going to be hanging because there's there's one two three uh one two yeah one two three four five windows in there i guess that we're not going to be using five out of the eight and um that we're not going to be using because they're in non-deer areas and i know there's nothing but getting behind us because of the contour um so in this situation this blind serves its purpose what this serves what the purpose is of this blind is i'm i'll show you here is i'm about 100 125 yards off from and this is on a small parcel don't you know get me wrong this is what can be done on these these spots the reason i did this to show folks is i'm about 100 i'm going to say 100 yards I haven't hit it with a range finder yet but 100 yards from our food plot that we put in and right below it right here runs the transition area that starts off the edge of the the, the uh, food plot we've got the pine cover on the bank the house we enter in from behind it so we slip right in the back door and as you're sitting in here you're looking right out the bow window and i've got a the uh, vine this is actually one of the vine mock scrapes hanging right down here right um 22 ish yards uh right down here right down the bank and the way that you sit in the blind it's down um might have to put a little pad here to get up uh, we might have to do some chair modification at some point but maybe some uh, taller office chairs or whatever the case is but fact of the matter is i've got shooting windows on both sides i can look right down my property line here and um across the pond and any deer that comes off the food plot has to come right around the end of the 
the pond come right through this transition area. It's a, it's wet below. It's the it's a it's a bench, and then up here the bank to where we are, and it goes right through that mock scrape, right on through transition pa transitions past us, and hits the corridor right into the uh, doe bedding area. Now the later in the fall. We're going to have to, I've already spoke with my son and my nephew about this, is we're going to have to get real stealthy um, because I've got some pines that we planted and stuff right next to the blind here to try to give us that side cover from that, um, that side protection cover, that access cover from the adobe bedding area because this property is only 330 feet wide. So you can imagine it's long, 1300 feet long, but uh, you know, we've, we, uh, we've got this in the spot. We just have to now, um, you know, keep our hunting pressure low. So in this situation going into this weekend, um, the one thing that I noticed when we got the, these, um, the blind is I'll start with this one here. Actually, I'll start with this one here because you can see it better is these, you know, they, uh, they've got the latch on the top, you just turn them. And then the, the, the hinges are actually, which I kind of like are hidden down below. Problem with it is, is some of these windows you can see. take a little force to get open. So today I've brought a little uh, scratch pad with me there, some some uh, uh, sandpaper, and I'm gonna knock this corner down here just a little and uh, to try to to try to get that just just so it, it's tight so there's you know no no weather comes into it. But this is the modification part of it that I'm talking about guys is is you gotta take these things and do it before um, you know, we're doing this before now in September, which is great because it's, it's done early and it's done for the, the youth season. But, you know, the last thing that we want to do is get in here, slip in the back door and when there's deer out in the food plot, transferring back through here and get the, the kids in here this weekend and go to open the door or go to open this window and it, it sticks and you blow the, blow the food plot out. So as they go down, this one is pretty quiet. This one's actually, it's got a little little squeak in it but not not bad get this thing soundproof as far as no squeaking it's no different than climbing climbing up a tree stand ladder stand squeaking banging clunking and what happens in these blinds is it becomes a, a, a megaphone of effect if you will where you drop one thing on the wall and it sounds like you you know you uh, shot something in a cannon in here sometimes so i've got you can uh, i'll show you i've got carpet that i put on the floor um i've actually put carpet um, tiles that I had done on the floor cut it in and this thing is pretty comfy but back to the window situation here when you get these windows and I'll show you a previous picture the windows open out you know the, the main panel window they open out the problem with that is if you're only bow hunting and you don't need those windows let's say and you just need the center and it's wide so it takes up you know as a bow hunter I can see you know I can see 60 yards in here um, versus having a narrow window but you know, out there at at that you know uh, point of impact out there, I can I can cover about sixty yards. Fact of the matter is, though, when this is open, if I had to use this the other window or this window here, this this door opens right into them. So that's the downside. That's the one thing that I don't like about the design of them. So um, what I did to my in the past, and I'll show you here what I did to these is I moved the latches obviously around the sides, and now the window comes up and add it at you and up above and I've got it so it hooks up here you can't see it in the camera but I've got it hooked up here up above us now um, we just turn a little dial there and it hooks now the problem with it is here is it didn't do it this morning but when I was in here the other day this window was squeaking like crazy so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around to all of these windows that we're going to open um, and I'm going to touch them up with, there's a way to do this, um, where you need to get the squeak out of this and of course you want to do this early so I'm running a little behind here but it's just just oil and you don't want to make it smell like a, you know, you're in a, a restaurant in here. I've got just a little brush and what I do is I'll show you here is I'm just going to take this Take this here, put the, just a, I mean, when I say small amounts, guys, I mean small amounts, obviously, like, just open this and it already smells in here. So, um, you're just going to go up here and we're just going to dab these hinges. We're just going to dab these hinges as we're working them to 
get to get some oil in there um penetrating oil this kind of thing and and uh you know oil uh, breakaway and wd-40 and all that stuff problem is is that stuff what i've found is that stuff is some serious serious um has some serious long long lasting smell and um i just don't like to use the uh just found this is easier and the residue factor on it isn't as strong and um you know it's something that i just kind of i kind of picked up years ago and like i said you're doing it early and and uh, the weather conditions will definitely will definitely be able to uh you know to get this back smelling <laughs> unlike a, a restaurant and it's not bad that's what why i use it is because uh it's nowhere near as horrible as you know most most oils are but as you can tell just you know and you might have to do this a couple times here you can you can hear that one there um might have to do it a couple times you know to get that to get that you know exactly where you want it so it does not squeak so that's how we cure that problem the other issue that we have in these blinds is the um the color now this one's new on the inside and you know in the future what i'll do is i'll go through and uh if this was you know this is for sale and you know i, I can recommend this to the owner but they can you know take it for you know whatever but i like to make them dark on the interior and uh you always want to make sure that there's no reflection um when i flip this window up so it goes out of the way mm. there's the squeak i was talking about uh if we flip this window up out of the way the bottom of it here ref reflects so you, all these little things on these blinds that you don't have to um you know necessarily sometimes worry about in a tree stand as far as once you're in there you can kind of you know other than moving your feet or adjusting your weight just a little bit these here have have uh, all kinds of different tweaks and 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 um, you know little quirks about them that you got to get used to if you're not you know accustomed to being a blind hunter. One of my one of the things I'm going to touch on here real quick is in these situations, I either I've learned this over the the years, and I, I either go one way or the other with these. I either put a if it's going to be a bow hunting situation only. Um, obviously I'm a, I'm a hang on tree stand guy still and because I'm a big guy. I, I have to have a big tree stand, a big platform. Um, but I, uh, if it's going to be a, just a bow situation, we hang those. If it's going to be a situation where you, you want to utilize that spot as a gun, um, hunting area, what I recommend doing is not setting the, um, I don't recommend setting the uh, blinds on the ground. And this is a video coming up here that we got shortly. Um, I don't recommend going in and putting a pop-up up in the same location, and I see that often, and I've done that in the past, and the reason I'm speaking of this is because it's it's haunted me in the past. It changes things on the ground, and and uh, the object to having the tree stand is being, you know, up and above that eyesight. So I, I recommend if it's going to be, you know, just knowing what the purpose of that is, you know, going into it. If it's going to be a situation where you're going to want to gun hunt out of it, then what I do is I either start with a ground blind, or I start with a ladder stand so it's more comfortable if you need a shooting rest. Um, so it's either one or the other for me. It's not it's not a multiple stand area. What's good about these octagon blinds is is this is a perfect uh, testament to to most um, most commonly used uh, areas. As you can see, folks, this is not on the food plot. This is in the timber. It's up against the bank. I'm, I've got a you know transition area that goes past with a, with a um, mock scrape, but I can use this as a gun gun blind. I can use this as a bow blind, and I'm not uh, too close to the bedding area, and I'm not on the food plot. Most of these street these Arcticon blinds that you're going to see, you're going to see photos of, you're going to see advertised, you're going to see them on the destination feed locations, and to me. That is something that you, as a as a hunter in a high pressure state, uh, we need to start recognizing that as far as who is giving that information out. It may work in their area while where pressure's lower. They're hunting, you know, Iowa and Missouri, and they can be on those destination food lo feed locations. What do I recommend it? No, I do not. 
um, but they can get away with it down there and we cannot get away with it in high pressure states. Um, so what the moral of that point is this, is make sure that you are, are knowing where your stand locations are, what the purpose is, how you're going to use them, what you're going to use them for, and the modifications that need to be done so you just don't set them there. And, um, you know, I haven't, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I haven't spent a lot of time in the uh, redneck blinds, let's say, or the, um, you know, the higher, the higher dollar um, fiberglass blinds. The ones that I have uh, been in, uh, I have noticed that they're real pingy compared to a, a wooden and an insulated blind. They're real, it's a, it's a, it's a different sound. So that's something that you got to think of. Um, and I've, I've also had the same issues with squeaky hinges and everything else. So anybody that tells you that you're going to spend, you know, that, that amount of money. And if you, if that's what you choose to buy, that's great. I mean, they're great blinds. Don't get me wrong. They're, um, maybe on the new property that we're, uh, that I'm going to be setting up here, our, our personal 140 that I just bought. I, uh, uh, maybe we'll throw one of those on there too in the future. I don't know. But these are hard to beat. I just know going into it, what I'm up against, I know the modifications that I've got to, that I've got to do to not, you know, not get a squeaky window or how to, how to get that handled. And also, like I said, why, why I'm setting it there. Um, but the last, the last point that we're going to touch on here is this. Um, if it works and it is a, a location where you can be comfortable and you can sit, you know, um, in those, not very, like I said, not very many spots outside of what most people believe, not many locations are a uh, all day sit stand. And uh, if you're sitting in a stand all day long, um, chances are you're probably wasting your time. You're in the wrong spot. You need to be able to move. Now up here, uh, you know, in the, in the uh, northern part of the country where we're at or the northeast, that happens more often than it does in the Midwest um, because of our, our uh, timber and our density and our pressure. So you can, that does play into longer sits. Fact of the matter is, if you don't have a tree stand or a ladder stand or a box blind that you can stay comfortable in, or you don't have the clothing to do so, uh, that's not a good combination um, either because what's going to happen is, and it happens time and time again, is you are moving to stay warm or you're, you're you know, getting um, hand warmers out or whatever the case is. And what happens is, is you end up getting busted because uh, you're not, you know, you're not in that zone. Uh, you're not comfortable and you're not on top of your game. And what happens is, is uh, then that sneaks up on you and you get busted. You know, you're there in, the, in that stand all day long and before you know it, uh, now, you're, now your hunt is blown and, and uh, you might as well leave the stand at that point if you get busted and eat your deer. Um, so what this is, is the modifications, the do's and the don'ts, how you get into these. I recommend always putting the door on the access side, I recommend. That's what I was saying. I love about these is because it's it's door, it's window, and it keeps the blind square to the motion. If you do have one that the shooting window is not in the center, then I highly recommend taking that center window, which looks like these, and cutting a bow notch out of it that would be in the center. Cutting a bow notch out of it so you'd open this, and then they fold all off to the sides. So you can bow hunt out of it as well. Um, it just makes life a little bit easier. So. Modification, the do's and the don'ts. Um, we're, I'm a huge fan of these. I'm a big believer. This, you know, goes back to the, to the days of my days of uh, filming full time, and guiding. And uh, as far as kids, the experience that you can give them in these blinds, and the communication that we can talk back and forth. Obviously, not as loud as I'm talking to you right now, uh, but that communication level I think is huge. Um, yeah, just on many parts, as a connection part, as a parent or or a mentor. Um, you know, versus, you know, the, the uh, silent program that you have to be on when you're in a tree stand or even a ladder stand. Um, so pre final preparations going into the weekend. This is one of them. Modifications on a blind. Use these in the spots that you can use them, but make sure that you're using them in the right spots in your transition areas, not on your destination feed locations. Thanks, guys.